Lord, thank you for the opportunity to bring these morsels from your word into the house this morning to be shared with your precious people. And I pray, as I always do, that the Lord would go where you want it to go and they would direct it there and that it would have the effect that you want it to have. In Jesus' name, amen. A woman walked, this writer says, a woman walked, in, walked into my aunt's animal shelter wanting to have her cat and six kittens spayed and neutered. Is the mother friendly? My aunt asked. Very, said the woman, casting an eye on the pet carrier. That's how we got into this mess in the first place. <laughs> she was too friendly. So a guy was in a canoe down on Shawnee Lake, if you know where that is. It's down, down beyond Bedford. And a thunderstorm was coming. Dark clouds, thunder, winds. He had to get to the dock before the downpour would hit. The wind would turn the canoe around. It seemed that the harder I rode, yeah, it was me, <laughs> the behinder I got. Finally, I summoned all my strength because every time I'd go a little bit, the wind would change and it would turn the canoe sideways and then it would turn it all around backwards from where I wanted to go. I summoned all my strength and I was able to stay straight and reach the dock. I was struggling against a headwind. I guess that's what you call a headwind. There are different kinds of headwinds in life. Struggles seem to intensify as we get older. When we're children, the potential um, of life seems limitless. But as we grow, reality sets in. What will I do in life? What can I do? What abilities do I have or will I have? Will I find someone to love? Will I marry and have children? Then all those questions are behind us. We've done all that. Now what? Well, we start to get aches and pains. So anybody here doesn't have aches and pains? Uh, nobody in my vintage anyway. The youngsters over here, they don't have any aches and pains. <laughs> but most of us, we, we're in that category that we do get aches and pains. We start to slow down. We look at what people older than us are going through. Dementia, nursing homes, wheelchairs, loss of independence, and the grave. These are all headwinds, struggles that we endure. All of us face headwinds. There's always a struggle. If you're not in a struggle, if you're not struggling against a headwind, well, there's one coming. Life is hard. But God is good. I don't know how people who are not saved cope with all the headwinds. All of the stress, all of the opposition that they face. If you trust in your own strength, your own intelligence, in your own abilities, if your heart is centered around your accomplishments, your nice house, your nice yard, your good kids, your car, your truck, your boat, your bank account, all of that can go away real quick. Real quick. Read the book of Job. He lost everything. All of his wealth, his children, his health, even the attitude of his wife, she said to him, curse God and die. Wasn't that encouraging? That's what she said to him. Job's response in Job chapter 1, 20 to 22. At this, Job got up and tore his robes and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship, and he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. 
In all this, verse 22, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Job and his life was all in for God. He was all the way God's man. He was all about the goodness of God, no matter what happened to him. And his friends came. <laughs> you don't need friends like Job's friends were. They were all critical. They all said, you must have sinned. You must have done something wrong. But he didn't. God just allowed him to be tested that way. I like the, law, the line in a song that we sang a couple times where it says, this line in the song, I have lived in the goodness of God. We can lose everything and still have God. To live in the goodness of God, we need to live in God's will. God has a will for you. Most people ignore it. The peace that passes all understanding. We can access that peace, but only if we're in God's will. Amen? Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Verse 7, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Those two verses go together. Every situation, every hard thing, that life brings your way, every headwind, should bring you to God. Bring you to Him with a grateful heart. We're all, all going to have hard things. You can't escape it. We're not to be anxious. We talked a little, little, a little bit about this, which you introduced the discussion on Wednesday. We talked a little bit about this on Wednesday. We're not to be anxious, that is fearful about what's happening. We're not to be like that. We're not to be consumed by worry. If we have the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, then we're consumed by that peace, not about worry, not by worry. We only have to dwell, that is mentally and emotionally, on the goodness of God. Everyone worries about something from time to time, but Christians shouldn't be overwhelmed by worry. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. That's Christians, all kinds of challenges and obstacles are encountered by everyone, but the Christian believers have a way to live, a way of life that helps us to be joyful in the midst of hardship, like Job was. We have to be in, and we have to live in God's will. Amen? We have to be in His will and to live in His will. Being in God's will, John, John 7, 17, Jesus said this, Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Those are Jesus' words. So there was a choosing involved. Choosing to do God's will. The first time you choose to do God's will is when you capitulate, give up, come out of the darkness of sin, and step into the holy light of God's grace and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and start walking a different kind of walk than you walked before. I think of Daniel when he had the vision in Daniel chapter 10. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat, or wine touched my lips. I used no lotions at all until three weeks were over. On the 
24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river Tigris, I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice, his voice like the sound of a multitude. Verse 7, I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such a terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. This terror came from being in the presence, not even seeing or hearing, just being in the presence of that which Daniel saw and heard. Verse 8, so I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up, for I have been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Here it comes now in verse 12. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. So Daniel had been a man of God. He had humbled himself before God. Daniel, we can say, lived in the will of God, lived and moved about in God's will. We can and we should be living in the will of God, not off and on, but all the time. Every time there's a decision to make, every time there's a temptation, every time there's a conflict between what I want to do and what God wants me to do, God has to win. Or I'm not in his will. So finding God's will, how do I find what God's will is for me? In Daniel's case, he humbled himself. In Moses' case, he also humbled himself. But first he argued with God. He had a couple of arguments. You know, I know what that's like. I argued with God about becoming a minister. I don't want to do that. I don't want anything to do with it. I argued. God won. <laughs> I got back into his will. If I'm in a store somewhere and God speaks to me with a still small voice and says, go pray for that person, I'm going to do it. No argument. No hesitation. Just do it. Amen. And I do that. I've prayed for several people at the Giant Eagle. And there's a lady that works in the service department that prays for me. She doesn't do it when she's in the store. But I ask her. She said, a black Baptist lady. And I go and ask her, would you pray for me? And uh, I had gout, severe gout. I was limping. And she said, consider it done. And, then, and two days later, it was gone. That happened it twice. And uh, the lady's a powerful prayer warrior. You know who to get to pray for you. You know what I mean? People who are living in the world of God. Yesterday afternoon, I was checking out at the Home Depot. And the guy at the register asked me if I was a Christian. This was a young man. God bless that young man. He is moving and living in God's will. He had a nerve to ask me if I was a believer. I said, yes, I am. Do we do that? You answer for yourself. <laughs> God's will is generally revealed in his word. It's in the Bible. The, his will is in there. The instructions, how to get saved, how to be holy, 
the requirement to be holy. How to stay holy or all in the word. Pay attention to preachers, but verify what they're saying. Don't just take my word for it. Check it out in the scripture. To find God's will for your life, stay in communication with God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16, 18. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for this. It's God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always and pray continually. Give thanks all the time. Pray without ceasing, it says in the King James. That doesn't mean there's never an end to your prayer. That doesn't mean you pray with every breath. Pray without ceasing, without uh, pray uh, continually means not to abandon or become lax in your prayer life. It means don't cease to be a prayerful person. Rejoice, pray, and be thankful. God's will for you. So then adjusting my will to align with God's will. How many know that you have a will? <laughs> we all do. But God's will is more important. So my will is self-centered. I constantly think of how to be well, how to stay well, how to look good to other people. But I have to examine myself to see if my desires, my thoughts, my ambitions are in line with God. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. That's a powerful verse. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, I have to constantly pray and listen to the Holy Spirit. I have to constantly be open to the possibility that God might speak into my spirit a new thought. Something new and different. Something I hadn't considered. We don't like new and different. <laughs> we like the same old, same old, reliable comfort zone. That's how we are. But if he's what he's leading me to might be foreign to my way of thinking, but I have to adjust. I have to do it his way. Then I will be in his will. And then living in the will of God. When you get into the will of God, you are staying in God's will, learning to adjust your will to be in line with his even though it brings unexpected change. That's, God, that's how God expects us to live. Unexpected change. Look at the change uh, in Noah's life. Look at the change in Moses' life. Look at the change in Paul's life. Unexpected change. Do you welcome that? I never did. <laughs> I had to learn to welcome unexpected change because that's how God expects me to live. Habakkuk 2.4. We never get into Habakkuk, but it says, See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. Hebrews 10.36-38. You need to, priests, to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. But... Most of us do our own will. But if you do the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, verse 37, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And by my righteous one, and my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. Any person in here can recite a list of troubles that they have. Even young, healthy people 
have concerns, and you young, healthy people with your concerns, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Wait, when you get old and gray and arthritis here and there. There are plenty of things that can cause stress, and stress itself causes physical problems. Some believers think that God is in our will. They think that God exists to please us. That's crazy. I should have had an amen right there. Amen. Thank you. You exist because God wills it. Every beat of your heart is because God wills it. We exist to please God. Amen. The purpose of our life is to worship Him. So we need to conform to God's will. My will, in each event, needs to conform to God's will. When I say mine, I'm talking about all of us. Then I will have the peace that passes all understanding. Then I can rest when crazy things happen all around me. And there's no shortage of crazy things happening all around us. Just watch the news. Do you have headwinds or the struggles of life overwhelming to you? Get all the way into God's will. Live in there and stay in there. Psalm 40, first three verses. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on the rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. And Psalm 40, 7 and 8. Then I said, Here I am. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is in my heart. Do you struggle? against headwinds, against pain, against worry. Most of us do from time to time. Are you all the way into God's will? Have you said, here I am, here I am, I want to do your will. Would you stand with me? <coughs> it's only 11.31. <laughs> Either one must have a shorter shorter song of service or else I preached too fast. <laughs> and you know in a church there are people who are facing hardships, difficulties, headwinds I call them. And some of them are all the way in like, you know, like Job was, but we don't stay that way. Sometimes we worry so do you have worries? Do you have concerns? Do you have things that you need to get peace about? Yeah, you probably do. <laughs> so if you're in that category, come and find a place to pray. Just come. Just step, step out of your seat and come and find a place to pray. You can